Coming up on Roanoke County Today, we learn about 211 Virginia, plus pay a visit to Winter Wonderland in Roanoke County. This and more coming up. Welcome back to the show. Today I'm here at 211 Virginia talking with Carissa South, who's an outreach specialist. Carissa, welcome to the show. Thank you so much, Amy. I'm happy to be here. Great. So there are a lot of services that 211 Virginia provides. Tell us about those. Sure. 211 is a dialing code, like 911. Mm -hmm. And instead of getting emergency services, when people call 211, they get connected to an information and referral specialist who will help them access all kinds of health and human services based on their location in their community. Okay, and what are the types of services that you can provide? So when people call us, they can be looking for a whole range of things. They might be interested in accessing health care or veteran services, children's services, family services, mental health support, um, substance abuse services, legal assistance. The list goes on and on. We can connect people to just about anything that they're looking for. Okay, so how does how does that work? Where is the, where is the headquarters for... 211 Virginia. So 211 is a statewide system mm -hmm. uh, in Virginia. It is operated through the state. Our funding comes through the Department of Social Services, but we are an independent contract with mm -hmm. the state. So when people call 211, they actually access um, our call center here in Roanoke. Our physical location is here. Mm -hmm. And then we also have a, a partner in Lynchburg, and they manage our database from there. Mm -hmm. Okay, so what can people expect when they pick up the phone and dial 211? So dialing 211, obviously three digits, is very easy. Mm -hmm. And when they call, they get connected to one of our contact specialists, and they're mm -hmm. asked what their zip code or city is and mm -hmm. what their need is. So as opposed to, say, a 411, where you call and say, I need the phone number for a location that you already mm -hmm. know, people who call 211 know they need help but don't know where to find it. So they give their location and say they need assistance with housing. Mm -hmm. Then our contact specialist will begin to um, engage them in a conversation and get more information about what that means because someone looking for assistance with housing might need help um, with their mortgage. They might mm -hmm. have a question about that. Or they might be homeless and they're looking for shelter. So it can be a very different conversation. And our contact specialists are trained to tease out those details mm -hmm. so that we make sure we get them the best service referral that we can. Okay, what are the top requests that you have here at the call center? You know, annually for about the last three years, easily our top requests are for rent or utility assistance and housing. Mm -hmm. Okay, and I'm sure there's plenty more that are out there too. Always, yeah, there are all kinds of needs. We help um, people connect to all kinds of job training and workforce development programs. Mm -hmm. um, it might be legal assistance. It could be, as I mentioned, all kinds of different channels in the housing area. Mm -hmm. um, and those, all of those programs that we then refer people to are going to be free or on a sliding scale. Okay, this is a great resource for people. It's really extensive. Um, mm -hmm. Statewide, we have about 22,000 programs. And we also um, have a whole program of seasonal offerings that we mm -hmm. activate or deactivate depending on when it is. So, for example, at the beginning of the year, when tax assistance becomes available, we'll have a whole group of listings for where people can go to get assistance in filling out their taxes. How about the winter months? So, the winter offers a whole new realm of assistance opportunities for 211. We do work very closely with localities on their emergency management plans. Mm -hmm. So during especially winter weather um, events, we, we become a resource for people to find out where they might be able to find a warming center or a shelter if a disaster really happens and people mm -hmm. need that. Okay, so um, if people want to find out more information, are you online? We are online. Oh, um, you can do self-research. The database mm -hmm. is exactly the same as our call center manages when people call in. You would go to 211 Virginia, all spelled out, dot mm -hmm. org. You would enter your zip code location and your need category, and then you would get a list of agencies geographically that serve where you're interested in receiving services. Okay, lots of information, and so any any questions that people might have, they can certainly call 211 Virginia or they go can. online. And it's 24-7. 
365 okay, days a year, we always have people answering the phones, and they're always ready to help no matter what. Great. Thank you so much for joining us and sharing the information. Thank you. Okay. We'll be right back. Welcome back to Roanoke County today. My name is Brian Klingenpeel and I'm the Community Outreach Coordinator for Roanoke County Fire and Rescue. It's beginning to look a lot like Christmas around here and as you begin to deck the halls this holiday season, we want you to be fire smart. Even a small fire that spreads to a Christmas tree can get very large very quickly. So as you choose your live tree this season, we want to remind you to please choose a tree that has fresh green needles that don't fall off when they're touched. Also, when you've picked your tree and you take it home before you put it in the stand, it's a good idea to cut two inches off the base of the trunk of that tree so that it will absorb water. When you're placing your tree in your home, please remember to not put it near a heat source. That includes anything like a fireplace, even a heat vent, or a radiator. That will only serve to dry out the tree, so keep it away from those heat sources. Also, we never want to block an exit with a Christmas tree. We've already talked a little bit about watering your tree, but you gotta remember if you have a live tree in your home this holiday season, to please water it daily. When lighting your tree, use lights that have been approved by a, a testing laboratory, something like UL. It's also a good idea to remember that not all lights are for indoor and outdoor use. Some may be only for one or the other, so pay attention to the manufacturer's recommendations. Also, we want you to replace any lights that may have worn or broken cords or loose light bulb connections. Never ever use lit candles on your Christmas tree to decorate your Christmas tree. That's a very dangerous thing to do. Also, please remember to turn out the lights on the Christmas tree when you leave your home or when you go to bed at night. Also, after the Christmas season, there are some important safety tips to remember about your live Christmas tree as well. You need to get rid of that tree after Christmas or when it gets dry. Having a dried out Christmas tree in your home is an extreme fire danger, and it should never be left in the home or in a garage or even outside the home leaned up against it. Roanoke County Solid Waste provides a way for you to dispose of your Christmas trees. You can do that for curbside pickup. They tell me that the trees just need to be to the curb by January the 9th, 2017, and they'll all be collected by the end of that week. We at Roanoke County Fire and Rescue want to make sure that you have a healthy, safe, happy holiday season. If there's any, you need any information about any more of these safety tips that I've given today, or maybe any others, please feel free to contact me, Brian Klingenpeel, at 540-777-8718, or check us out on the web at roanokecountyva.gov slash fire rescue. Roanoke County Today, we'll be right back. Welcome back to the show. The winter months are upon us and that means the chance for snow in the forecast is always possible. So we're here talking today with Jason Baum with the Virginia Department of Transportation. Jason, welcome to the show. Thank you. People often see your face when winter weather comes. So tell us about your position with VDOT. Well, I'm a communications manager for VDOT here in the Salem area, which one of my jobs is to be a spokesperson for VDOT. So uh -huh. you probably do see me uh, a little bit more during the winter months when we have snow and winter weather. Sure. And tell us, VDOT does plow the roads in Roanoke County when it snows. So tell us how many miles it, 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 does that involve? Well, in the Salem District, we have 12 counties. Roanoke mm -hmm. County is 
one of our 12. And in Roanoke mm -hmm. County alone, we have about 1,400 lane miles of road that we wow. plow. Okay. So we are responsible for you know the road maintenance and snow removal in Roanoke County. Mm -hmm. And how is uh, the plowing prioritized? Well, always with any winter weather event, we're going to concentrate our efforts on the major roads first. So mm -hmm. the primary roads and the interstates, those numbered one through 599, are going to get our attention. And as long as the winter weather is continuing to, to, to fall, we're going to be on those roads making multiple passes. Mm -hmm. Once the weather stops and we make progress on those major roads, then we turn our attention to the secondary roads and those neighborhood streets, those numbered 600 and above. Okay. And what's your goal of, of having the streets cleared after a snow event? What we, what we aim for is within 48 hours of the end of the storm. That means that the storm mm -hmm. has stopped, the weather has moved on. Within 48 hours, we're looking at having the roads passable. And that usually means that we've made at least one pass over all of our road systems. That doesn't necessarily mean bare pavement. It means we've made at least one pass over those routes. Okay. And what can citizens do to help um, in the snow removal? There are several things that residents can do to help us out. The biggest thing is to not travel, particularly during the mm -hmm. height of the storm. You know, the more incidents that occur, the more traffic that's out there, it really does slow us down in getting, making progress on plowing and treating those roads. Mm -hmm. Another thing that can really help us, particularly in subdivisions, if people will not park on the streets, if they have alternatives to park in a driveway, uh, it really can help when we do get to those routes. It can make things go a little bit smoother. Another area is don't park in a cul-de-sac. That makes it particularly tricky for a snowplow to make the turns. Mm -hmm. And the biggest thing that residents can do is really just be patient, particularly understand it's going to take time before we're going to get to those roads. Uh, you know, we are starting with those roads with the highest traffic volumes and working our way down. Mm -hmm. Depending on what type of storm we have, the conditions before, during, and after a storm, temperatures, it can be for very slow going. Mm -hmm. So we ask for residents to really be patient. And another tip for folks is when you are shoveling your snow, if you do shovel to the right. If we have a deep snow and they shovel to the right as they face as they're facing the roadway, mm -hmm. it will help when the snow plow comes by because we do have a lot of folks have concerns about snow plows pushing that snow back in their driveways and particularly when we have multiple passes on subdivision roads. Sometimes a snow plow will come through once and again mm -hmm. people will shovel in between that and they get very concerned and upset that the snow has been right. pushed back in their driveway. There isn't a lot that we can do without that. We don't plow in private driveways. So if you shovel to the right, that's a little bit less snow you might have to, to shovel out again. So those are some tips for, for residents. Good. And what are some of the challenges? Uh, I know you had some last year with ice and what are some, some other challenges you might have? One of the big things that residents need to be aware of is when we have really cold temperatures. And this creates a situation where um, uh, ice and snow will freeze down and it'll pack on those roadways, mm -hmm. particularly if the pavement is really cold before a storm, during and after. So until the sun comes up and we see some temperatures rise, a lot of times on those secondary roads, the ice and snow will bond down, pack on the roadway, and we can't plow it up. So a lot of times we ask for residents to be patient, to understand that we, there's not a lot we can do when those temperatures get very, very cold. Now that's a weather pattern that you see mostly in New England or sometimes in the Midwest. And, and that happens a lot in New England states where snow and ice will freeze down on those neighborhood streets and it'll stay there for, for sometimes weeks, even months before mm -hmm. it, the sun comes out and warms things up and it's, we see some ability to, to, to plow that ice and snow off those roadways. Right. When it happens around here, people aren't as used to that. So they think they get very concerned that you know, their roads are, are icy or, or mm -hmm. frozen down with an ice pack. And so that's sometimes when we need some patience. Mm -hmm. Also, when we have ice storms, that's really a worst case scenario for us. Right. There is not a lot we can do with ice storms. We treat it with some chemicals. We put down some some uh, abrasives to give people traction on those roads, but really, mm -hmm. again, it's about temperature. And so understanding and being patient is, is, a, is a big benefit mm -hmm. for us when we're out there working. Okay, and where can people find more information? The best source of information for road conditions is our Virginia 511 site. The mm -hmm. website is www.511virginia.org. It's gonna have the most up-to-date road condition information that we have. Mm -hmm. So that website or the mobile app is, is a good place to look, even not even for snow, but also for traffic incidents and other uh, roadway situations that may impact your travel. All right. Okay, great. Great tips. Thank you so much for joining us today. You're very welcome. Okay. We'll be right back.
The South County Library is now a designated passport acceptance facility. Passport applications are taken by appointment during these hours only, Monday through Saturday, 9 a.m. to 4 p.m., and Monday and Tuesday evening, 6 to 8 p.m. For more information or to schedule an appointment, call the South County Library at 540-777-8782. Details are also located on the County Library website, roanokeountyva.gov forward slash passports. Welcome back to the show. I'm here at South County Library today talking with Director Diana Rosapep. Welcome to the library. Sure, and welcome to our show. Oh, oh thank you, I Thanks. think. <laughs> well, thank you for joining us. So you have a very notable um, announcement that was recently made, and that's to retiring after many years of, of time with Roanoke County. So we wanted to sit down with you and talk to you about that. How many years has it been? It's perilously close to 31 years. It's 30 wow. years and 10 months. Okay, that's that's been a long time. Yes. You've seen a lot of changes in the library. What are some of those changes? I think that obviously, well, let's say the most obvious one is all the changes in the buildings. We've seen the three new libraries that are bigger, brighter, happier, more welcoming, all those things. Mm -hmm. So those, those have been a big change. Mm -hmm. um, the circulation, which is the number of items that go out each year, has gradually tripled. Uh, mm -hmm. Visitor counts are almost a million visitors a year, things like that. Wow. So um, it's been quite it's been quite a growth period. Sure, and the technology. The technology is everywhere. Uh, computers mm -hmm. are just such a mainstay of library work mm -hmm. now that you can't have a library without them very well. Right. And uh, the only problem with they're wonderful, but the only problem is that they tend to eat all the space for everything else because mm -hmm. they have to have desk space and wiring and all the other things that support materials. Sure. So sure. that's tricky. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah, no longer are the days of card catalogs. You have computer systems to do everything. No, mm -hmm. it, it is. The catalog's online, and it's actually much better. People mm -hmm. sometimes say, I wish you had the card catalog back, but I think it's because they forget all the laps they used to do around the card catalog, trying to find the right drawer that had the right card, that had the right book, that, you know, things like that. So right. this, you just type it in, and it comes up and tells you, not only do we own it, but is it actually here? Mm -hmm. So that's... I think that's a pretty major improvement. Absolutely. And libraries are seen more like community centers now, too. Absolutely. It's always hustling and bustling like it is around us right now. How has that been? It's, this has been one of the most fascinating things to watch. And I've always enjoyed, since we moved into this building, for instance, uh, to watch people who've never been in this building or a library like this. When they walk mm -hmm. in the door, they literally stop almost in their tracks and look around and mm -hmm. are kind of amazed by it and then they just melt into the building. They uh, mm -hmm. find a place they like and they park there and they're happy. Mm -hmm. The buildings, the new ones, have so many places mm -hmm. to be. The old ones almost became hit and run libraries. People ran in the door, grabbed their stuff and ran back out to the car because either they were double parked or they didn't have time. Now they take time when they mm -hmm. come here. This, these are buildings that want you to be in them. Right. And that's different. And there's coffee shops and, there is, and a couple of the libraries. Yes, there is. Um, and they do very well. We have like Mill Mountain Coffee here at this library uh -huh. and uh, there'll be a new cafe opening at Vinton pretty soon in, mm -hmm. the, middle, in the middle of December. So Great. Good. That's, that's a difference. Yeah. Sure. And Glenver has one what's kind of a self-serve mm -hmm. coffee area. So. It's and how many libraries are in Roanoke County? We have six libraries, six. and uh, I don't want to leave out Hollins and Bent Mountain and Mount mm -hmm. Pleasant. They haven't been, they're still the traditional style buildings, mm -hmm. the kind of book box buildings. Mm -hmm. But um, Hollins, for instance, is so tremendously busy that I know its time will come too. And mm -hmm. they'll be moving into something like this someday, mm -hmm. which is pretty exciting to think about too I'm and sure. plan for. Sure, sure. Yeah. And so what are some of your favorite memories working in the library oh, system? I'm sad to say you can't talk about all of them. Uh, <laughs> but I, I think about things, the, the kind of, there's entertainment value in some things. Uh, when we first got the internet, for instance, before people had a lot of digital devices and carried their phones and had all the apps on them, people were just getting used to things like um, using the internet and we had a gentleman call us from Cancun, Mexico, mm -hmm. uh, who was on the beach and lost. He didn't know oh. how to get back to his hotel, but he knew that uh, 
the library would help him. This was his home library, uh -huh. the old one. And uh, so he called the reference department and asked. And they walked him back to his hotel wow. by giving him directions <laughs> block by block. They got him to the intersections and turned right turn left, go a block, you should see this, and, it's amazing. I, and it worked. Yeah. <laughs> it was just kind of entertaining. He was very appreciative. Uh -huh. Of course, now he could do it all himself, I guess, if he were sure. digitally aware. Sure. <laughs> but, but changes he's like thinking that. about his, his home library. Sure. He knew yeah. he could find the answers there. He knew they'd help him, and they did. Right. They, got, they didn't lose him elsewhere in Cancun, uh -huh. and they got him back to his hotel. That's so. great. Any uh, other favorite memories? I think it's a lot of little snippets of things. I love... Uh, if you're here on Halloween, for instance, mm -hmm. all the little preschoolers in costume parading all over the libraries, both a startling and a very entertaining moment. Sure. Um, things like that. They're just cute things. Or when we go out and do programs with kids or adults, or you have someone come up to the desk and thank you for something you've done. It's, mm -hmm. it's tremendously rewarding. Mm -hmm. And I think the staff, um, those are the moments that make your day as a staff person. When, sure. When they when you've helped somebody. Mm -hmm. So that's great. Just a lot of stuff. Sure, <laughs> sure. I know the Christmas tree lighting is in December as it well. Is. And that's that's been here at South County now for a couple of years. It was it's been here twice mm -hmm. and this will be its third year. And um, it's just that is a very nice event. People mm -hmm. it's very Dickens of a Christmas kind of thing. Right. They just come and make crafts and eat things and watch movies and just they're all over the building and of course Santa's here and mm -hmm. things like that so it's all that and other programs like that are fun mm -hmm. when people are just enjoying themselves. Sure mm -hmm. that's yeah. great and so what's next for you? Oh I don't know it's, <laughs> I, I think I told someone I, I hope it's not camping but <laughs> that's my husband and grandsons like to camp but that's not my thing but uh -huh. um, I I've got to give some serious thought to what I'm going to do next. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I'm interested in a lot of things. It's just deciding kind of what you want to pursue. So. Mm -hmm. But you do have those grandchildren, and that's I important. Do. I do, and mm -hmm. everybody, everybody tells me they've never met an unhappy retired librarian. So right. <laughs> that will be. I'll find out and let you know. <laughs> <laughs> that's wonderful. How about um, your time with just Roanoke County as a whole, not just with the library, but as a county employee? You have. You are one of the longest tenured yes. employees at the county at this moment. So what, what has that been like? I think I am the official senior geezer. Uh, <laughs> and I'm working toward becoming the geezer emeritus. And um, I think it will be, um, in watching it, one of the things that I wish citizens knew is how hard county employees work mm -hmm. to make things go right for them. And I hope that uh, everybody has a chance to understand that someday because it's really been a wonderful experience to, um, to work with so many talented, dedicated people. They, mm -hmm. they really do value what they're doing and they value doing the right thing for the citizens. So I, I'm kind of hoping that they get to know that. And, and you've obviously enjoyed working for Renault County. You've I been have. here a long time. I know. Either that or they didn't change the locks often enough and I kept coming back to work. <laughs> I don't know, but I'm still here for a little bit longer. Great. Well, thank you so much for your service. Um, I know as, as a county employee, I certainly appreciate all that you've done for Reno County as well as all the other staff who've worked with you all these years. Well, so thank you. Thank, well, you're welcome. And uh, I found it wonderfully rewarding. It's been a great opportunity. So good. Well, thank you for your service and best of luck to you. Thank you. I think my family may need that more than me, but. <laughs> right. Thanks for joining us. Okay. We'll be right back. Volunteer firefighters save lives. Do you have what it takes? Visit roanokecountyva.gov slash frvolunteer or call 540-777-8706 to become a Roanoke County Fire and Rescue Volunteer Firefighter. Jason Peters, I'm the chairman of the Ronald County Board of Supervisors, and I want to welcome you here tonight. We've got a couple things we want to, uh, a couple people we want to acknowledge, and then we're going to move on.
going to a tree lighting, and I hear there's a special visitor going to be with us here tonight. So if I could at this time, I'd like to uh, recognize Diana Rosenpeff, who is with our Rhino County Libraries, if she would come forward. Good evening. We're very happy to have you here tonight. Welcome to the library. Uh, welcome to our third Christmas tree lighting at South County Library. Uh, as you can see, there are still people waiting to get in, but we have some eager entertainers here for you. We hope you enjoy the evening, and thanks again for coming. Have fun. And to my right, we're going to, we would like to introduce the Penn Forest Elementary School. It's going to have a couple songs for us. to say on behalf of Roanoke County, I know the county administrators here with us this evening, on behalf of the, all the Board of Supervisors, myself and my family, we do want to wish you a Merry Christmas and a Happy Holidays. With that said, let's light a tree. Ten. Yeah. 